Good morning, I'm Morgan Donner, and today I am excited to share with you my absolute all-time favorite number one finger loop braid pattern. There are already a number of really great YouTube tutorials on how to do finger loop braiding, but I haven't seen any on my particular favorite pattern, so I figured I'd show you that today. Without much ado, let's get into it. So we're going to start out here with a total of six strings, four of one color, one of another, one of another. The more observant of you might note that each of my loops is actually two. For our purposes, pretend each of them is just one. I doubled up because I wanted to hopefully make it a little bit more visible for you guys. Do forgive the state of my table here. It's a work table, which means it sees a lot of uh, rough wear and tear. Putting all of your loops together and keeping them nice and taut, we want them to all be exactly the same length. I'm gonna get to the end here. I'm gonna actually hold on to this end because I'm pretty sure that that way is nice and neat. And I'm going to toss this end into a knot. We need to go ahead and secure this end down, keep it from moving around on us. And for that, I have this handy dandy table clamp. So you can get all sorts of clamps in many varieties. I'll try to link some below, but this is the one I happen to have. I think it came as part of an embroidery kit of some kind. So next we're gonna to wanna to secure this bundle to our table clamp. And you could just, I guess, toss it down. But then once you've made your braid, you'll end up having to cut this off, at least with my particular table clamp solution here. So what I like to do is actually make a separate little loop holder. I'm just gonna grab some excess string I have and then tie this into a little loop. I don't know the name of this technique. I, I guarantee it has a name, but what I do is slip my fingers in, pull them up and around, and then together. So we're gonna slip that over the knot, pull it tight, and then you can hook this little bit around your thing. Whenever we're done, you can very easily undo that little knot there and you won't have to sacrifice any of your braid to get it off of your clamp. All right, so I've got my loops tied to my table here. I don't know if you can actually see it from where you are. We are all ready to start braiding. Do get comfortable, you're gonna be here a little while. So I want to separate out my different colors here, my different loops. And so I'll kind of sit here and zhuzh around with my different loops until I've got them all detangled from each other. So to start off with, we're gonna take the color that we have four of, in my case, it's red, and we're gonna put that on the middle two fingers on each hand. Then you have your two leftover colors. One's gonna go on your index, the other's gonna go on your pinky of the right hand. It doesn't really matter which one's which, they're gonna get switched throughout this process, okay? Just a really quick aside, uh, I don't necessarily recommend this as your very first braid to try. Uh, as I mentioned, there's lots of videos showing really good starter braids, and I will make sure to link those below, as well as fingerloop.org, which is a really great website to learn how to do this. There's also a book, which is Take Five Bows Departed. I think it's the right name, and, uh, and that's a really great one too. I've lost my copy, otherwise I would have shown you a picture of the cover, but I'll link to that below as well. So our index finger is going to be doing a lot of the grabbing today. I'm going to take my index finger and go through this first loop. I know that's kind of tricky here. Let me move it this way. So I kind of move my middle finger back here so that I can go through that first loop and then also through the second. I realize that's tricky. I did say this is probably not a good beginner braid, but I have my index finger through those two braids and then using my thumb to help do the grabbing and kind of hold it open for a second, I'm going to take this bottom loop reversed. If I was taking it exactly as it was, I would just let go of it and then take it, right? But instead, I actually want to take it upside down so I'm grabbing from the bottom, coming in through. I have my loop, there we go. I've successfully transferred the loop through onto my right hand. Four over here, two over here. <laughs> then we're going to lower this one down one. 
So I'm going to just shift that down. There we go. So now I'm going to reach through using the one that I just removed it from. I'm gonna reach through with my middle finger and grab the ring finger on the other side, also reversed. So I'm grabbing the bottom. I'm not just doing a simple transfer. Instead, I'm grabbing through the bottom. There we go. Reversing it, pulling it through. Ta-da! All right, last tricky step here is we're going to reverse are two different colors. In this case, white and green. It doesn't really matter whether I go green over white or if I go white over green. As long as I do it the same way every time, it doesn't matter, right? So, but the way I like to do it is green over white. Grab that and pull. Now, something I haven't really mentioned because I've been kind of focused on showing the steps is you do want to tighten by pulling this taut each time. And there we go. We want to try and do that between pretty much every string movement, particularly ones where the string exchanges hands. So something to keep in mind. And we want to start the same way we did at the beginning, which means that these ones need to walk down. Come on. There we go. It's actually kind of hard to do it loose. There we go. Let me, I guess, I don't know why I'm trying to do it loose. Okay. So, and then this one, middle finger, there we go. Okay. I think I am a little bit too close to the camera here, but unfortunately, once you've got stuff on your fingers, it's a little bit hard to move things around. So bear with me as I'm very kind of up close and personal here. Okay. So that is one round down. Now just do that about 50, 80, 100 more times, <laughs> and then you have a completed braid. So let's go on. So I keep on wanting to say things like index and what have you, but I need to stick with the names. So A, B, C, and D. I need to remember that. Same here. A, B, C, D. Okay. Hopefully the slight angle change will help you guys out a little bit. A is going to go through B and C. It's going to come over here and take the left C reversed. Move the left B down to C, then through C, we're gonna steal C off the other hand. Now we need to always remember to change over A on left and D on the right. That is what's gonna get our pretty, pretty pattern at the end. And then these need to walk down. A through B, through C, take C reversed. Move C down on the left hand, steal C from the other hand, and then switch A and D. And then reset so that we're just like we were at the beginning. Now you can set down your loops. It's tricky though. So make sure that you remember how you set them down. If I have to set down, I always go kind of, you know, claws down, hands down. I try and spread my fingers out uh, and carefully place my strings. Oh, don't, don't go too far. Okay. So I can see that I've got my three loops. I know that I put them down in the same starting position. Never set them down in some random middle of your steps. That's no good. Set them down the same way that you would pick them up at the very, very beginning. And now when I need to pick these back up, I can grab my three loops and put them on my fingers and continue going about my business. I thought you guys might appreciate a how I do the pulling apart motion, which I wasn't necessarily super clear on earlier. Uh, each time I transfer bows from one hand to the other, I go ahead and do this sort of finger wiggly, pushy outy movement. This is actually something that can be very handy to have a extra set of hands for because you can have one person at one end sitting here doing the 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 loopy manipulation and you'll have another person at the far end 
where the strings come together, constantly beating it back with a, a stick or something. That way you always have a very tight braid, which is pretty nice. Whenever you're doing it all by yourself, like I am today, there is a little bit of a tendency to end up with slightly looser braid at the beginning and then a slightly tighter braid by the end because you get more leverage as you go along. I totally thought that this was going to be more of a uh, chat with me for a bit kind of video, but it turns out I kind of need to concentrate on what I'm doing a little bit. So apparently I can't really hold much of a conversation while I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. This would, however, be a really great time to put on a podcast or audiobook. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, I genuinely really enjoy listening to a bunch of different podcasts and audiobooks. Do you guys have any particular favorite podcasts that you want to recommend? I'm always, always looking to check out some more. Nope, 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 don't grab that one. Yeah, see, I can't, I can't talk <laughs> and uh, braid at the same time, apparently. I keep finding myself getting distracted and almost grabbing the wrong string. If you do accidentally end up grabbing the wrong string or you drop a string and you're not sure if you picked it back up correctly, which happens, definitely, <laughs> uh, it's not a big deal. Yes, it, it, your pattern is going to be a little interrupted. You might see a slight deviation in the pattern if you were to look at the finished braid, but that's fine. It'll still be a perfectly functional braid in the end, which is all that matters, right? It's looking pretty. I don't know if you guys can see it. You know what? What am I doing? I should show you guys a close up of what I'm all about here. I keep uh, touting this as my favorite braid and I haven't even gone through the trouble of showing you what it looks like yet. My stringy bits are just about done. You can see I've about run out of room here. Yeah, I think I might just call that good enough. So here is the end of our cord. Hopefully that's focusing. There we go. I really, really love this pattern. I just, I dig the contrast of the, the edges. It's kind of actually a nicely compact and, and stiff bit of cord. Now let's see, let's compare our beginning and our end here. Okay, not, not too bad. So here's the end and here's the beginning. You can see that, like I said, that first centimeter or two is always gonna be a little off and iffy, but uh, we're actually not too bad. You can see that occasionally I do make mistakes. You can see here I must have messed something up. I'm kind of, my white stitch is sort of sunken back down in there somehow. I also did something funny here. See how that section is a little bit skinnier than the rest around it? I must have done something something funny there with my loops. Little imperfections will happen, but you know, this is still a perfectly usable length of cord and will suit my purposes just fine. So do stay tuned for the next video in a week or two where I show what I'm actually making this braid for. Have a great day, guys.